Okay, two other answers. Louisiana, okay. My name's Adam, this is Herman, and this is Adrian, and we're representing how uh, men of Lincoln would have dressed in 1774. The fact that you guys are all now living at Hanscom Air Force Base means that you're in that town, though there's a little bit of a secret. Hanscom Air Force Base is a little bit of a swamp back in 1774. We heard about that. Yeah, <laughs> kind of tricky. But first I gotta ask you, why do we have guns? None of you guys brought muskets, right? Your parents are in the military. Okay, but why do we have guns right now? Because most people in the 1770s don't just walk around with muskets. Heavy. We got work to do. What's up? What's up? Because of the red coats. But there are red coats, but they're in Boston. That's like 20 miles away. What up? Um, because you never know when they might be coming. You could, yeah. We do have alarm riders that are going to tell us, hopefully in advance. So maybe in that time point, the red coat. Yeah, but like, there's no British here. This is a park. I'm completely safe. I feel secure. What could we be here for with muskets? Besides to show you guys. Yeah. So we could be at our militia muster, and that's basically a big meeting your whole town holds. The rest of the town isn't here, so it's not that. Think about nature. Any other ideas? Um, so we Yeah. Yeah, we could be hunting. We could just be shooting for fun, but there's no target. So yeah, we could be shooting animals. That gets me to essentially what I'm gonna ask you guys to do. I'm gonna quiz you on a couple things. I'm gonna keep asking you questions. I would like everybody to have a chance to answer. But if you guys answer those questions, we'll shoot these muskets for you. Yay. Yay. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. Now what, because you mentioned animals, what are we shooting in Lincoln in 1774? What animals would you shoot today maybe, and do those animals exist back then? In the blue shirt with the sharks. Deer? That one gets tricky, because there's an officer in Lincoln called a deer reeve, and he gives you a fine if you shoot a deer out of season. That's in 1774. A deer might be an option. There's not very many of them. Turkeys? Turkeys? Possible too. But turkeys in the wild are kind of hard to find, right? And you can just have a turkey in your farmyard and they're easy to kill. What's up? Bunnies? Bunnies are easy. Yeah, they, they, they breed everything. Crazy. What's up? Pigs? But people have. Are these pigs wild? Bears. Bears? Have you ever seen a bear in Lincoln? <laughs> I'm not picking on you. I'm saying that animals like bears. What? There's a bear on base? It's still on base. That is pretty rare. So bears need a lot of space. Wolves need a lot of space. Any big animal that eats meat needs a lot of space and doesn't really like people. So they're really not in Lincoln because, frankly, people have shot them or made them move. Any big animal like a moose, not going to happen. Any smallish animal like a deer, that might work, but you can't just shoot them whenever you want. There's a season. That's been going on since 1692. What? Yeah. So, turkeys, maybe. Possible. But frankly, who said bunnies? Yeah. Squirrels. Squirrels, yeah. They have to have trees, and there's not that many trees. But, basically any animals in Lincoln in 1774 are annoying. Like bunnies, or squirrels or groundhogs or a fox. They can hide places and get away from people. So you can't kill all of them, basically. Or you wouldn't want to. What about tame animals that might have replaced all those big things like bears that you guys mentioned? What what farm animals have you guys seen in Lincoln? Horses? Horses? Snails. Are you gonna be a snail farmer? I would applaud that if you did. But somebody said horses. What else? Cows. Cows, yeah. Cows. There's a lot of cows in Lincoln back then. Pigs. Pigs, yeah. Pigs in a nice little farmyard, right? Because you don't want them running into the woods. Then you'll have to find them. So, chickens, yeah. Yeah. You can build a house for chickens. They hang out in your backyard. Some people have chickens today in Lincoln. Sheep, yeah. The captain of this minute company, William Smith, he's got a whole flock of sheep. 
basically. But all these animals are tame. They're easy to keep. You know where to find them. And frankly, you don't need a musket to shoot a sheep, right? So how do people make space for all those tame animals? Because who mentioned cows? Cows need a lot of space. They need a lot of food. How do you make space for those animals? Yeah. Most people in Lincoln are farmers. They do just that. Make pens. Make pens, yeah. What about this whole landscape here? This would be a great place to put cows, for instance, or sheep. You have to own the land. You have to own the land, yes. You get to put it anywhere. What about this? The trees can go wild. Yeah, but you might have to cut down trees to have a, a, a open space for livestock right here. So, what about, if, what about the muskets? I'm getting to that. I got a couple more questions. <laughs> if we cut down most of the trees in Lincoln, most of Lincoln looks like Pierce Park. Look out at this park right now. About two thirds of it is pretty open with grass. That's what Lincoln looks like. And then there's individual trees, sure. There's woodlots like over there near the Hartwells. There's a big woodlot where people gather firewood. And you guys at Hanscom, if I could pick on you guys, right over there. In that swamp over there, where there are more trees, because it's hard to get into, and that's fine. But in this landscape without wolves, without bears, with not many trees, what do we shoot at? There is one big answer, and it's up in the sky. Birds. I want you guys to look up at the sky. Imagine a flock of passenger pigeons. Literally millions of pigeons. Oh, birds! Bird. Bird. Yeah. Bird. Imagine that, but times, again, two million. Imagine it's so thick you can't see the sun. Imagine how much those birds poop. Yeah. Imagine them laying down in a hay field and smooshing the grass. That's what farmers in Lincoln are shooting at with their muskets. It would be easy. So, to do that, if Herman can step forward. Oh my God. Watch out one as well. We're not going to shoot yet. But so we have a shot pouch and a powder hole. This shot bag holds our tools, basically a screwdriver. We're gonna also have wadding, which comes from uh, the plant flax, it's called toe, to make sure our shots are more accurate. It makes us clean our weapons pretty easily too. We also have our shot. So for instance, I've got this little pouch. You can hear that? It's like marble, so I can shoot at a bird and I'm not gonna miss as easily. So I've got all that in my bag here. And then on top, who mentioned cows? <coughs> Me. Yeah, you're a hero. We have cows, so we've got horns. This is like plastic before plastic. It's a waterproof box where I can put my gunpowder. I've got a pound of powder on my side. Means that I'm going out for a day's hunting. I'm not gonna shoot that much, but I've got it where I need it. And if it starts raining, it's not a big deal. In his hand, Herman's got a fouling gun. Can you show that to everybody over there too? You notice about it, it's really long. Which when you're shooting those little marbles called shot, it's gonna make it more accurate. I've got a very old musket. This is a 1728 French infantry musket. By this point of the, you know, 1770s, this is almost 50 years old. It's pretty outdated. The lock is have to be replaced and everything else. But these are all right for shooting at birds. And Adam, this calling gun is a replica of, of one that was used by an actual Lincoln Minuteman in 1775 at North Creek. So we want to make sure this is junior. super accurate for you guys, and we literally copied some of the specific gear that they carried for that case. The original of that one is at the Concord Museum. Yes, yeah. the original is in the Concord Museum, and the uh, curator of the museum allowed me to uh, copy it, so I made it. I got a hard question. One more couple hard questions. Should girls shoot? No! Yes, sir! Yes! answer now. Yes! Should moms go hunting passenger pigeons? <laughs> so there are women back then that do use fire locks. There are women that join the army and even disguise that with male clothing. It's not as many of them because it takes a lot of work. But that's a debate that I want you guys to have. And we can talk about what happens back then. This gets even trickier and don't answer this one. Just think about it. Should the color of your skin decide whether you can handle a gun like this? No! Don't answer. 
those are things that people are debating, fighting and dying and serving for in the 1770s, handling those hard questions. Now, there is a system that works differently. Mr. Adrian can step forward. He can show this bag on his right side. You see this leather pouch? It's called a cartridge pouch. That means that he can hold all his ammunition pre-wrapped up, pre-measured, ready to go, instead of having separate ball, separate shot, separate powder horn, he can just have a cartridge here with all of it measured out, ready to go inside. That means he can fire four times faster, four to six shots in a minute, which is way faster than what Herman and I can do with everything being loaded separately. He also might have other military equipment like his canteen, he might have a sword and a knapsack. Can I have one singularly brave volunteer? Your hand went up first. Can you come up here? So, nobody's gonna fire except because for us. you're gonna be a soldier. Yeah. So you need a sword because soldiers have swords. And you also need to go serving for potentially months. So I want you to put this big heavy knapsack on. Yeah. And you know you're gonna get thirsty marching all that long way. Now you're a soldier, you're not just a farmer, but you also need to put this uh, hand scene on. <laughs> and you need a military musket, even an old oh, military musket oh, with a bayonet. Oh, right? Can you pick up one of those? <laughs> That's a lot of gear, right? That's really heavy. That's a lot of work. If I'm going to tell you that Lincoln and people living in Hanscom didn't choose this option in 1774, even though the revolution was a year away. Why didn't they choose this? They can shoot so much faster. They've got really intimidating bayonets. Why wouldn't you go for that? It's really heavy, right? Okay. What other issues might you have? Uh, basically having a sword on your waist. What did you say? Having a sword on your waist. Yeah, but this costs a lot. You gotta find someone to make this not useful for shooting pigeons. You're gonna kill people with this. That might be a really hard choice for you. Maybe your town gets in an argument about what to spend money on. Maybe it takes months. So I'm saying that bayonets are really impressive. They do arrive after the revolution starts, but in Lincoln we can't say that they arrived before it. Oh, you mentioned the British. The British are going to be 
for shooting birds, that would take a lot of effort. And they'd have to answer some of those hard questions that you guys were put to today about who's going to shoot, what the landscape looks like. Thank you guys for answering all my questions. Thanks for coming along. Can you bring up the sword for the last one? If you guys have any other questions before you guys go. I can grab it after, after Can you bring up the sword for the last one? It's like an iron. It's pretty used to it, right? Are you really going to stab someone with a sword? No, 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 no. I'm going to stab you. I'm going to stab you. So that's, it looks like you could have done more than four shots in a minute, but yeah. the other is yes, no. you, Somebody um, asked a pretty good question over there. What's your name? Doris? Doris asked a really good question about why Americans didn't like tea. Yeah, because there was a tax on tea. So shooting at somebody with a musket, that's an easy way to show you've got a problem with their politics, right? <laughs> What about taking something that you really do like? Like, do you, what, what's your favorite drink you got? Soda. You like soda? Root beer. Root beer. Okay, who's voting? Who's voting? Who's voting for water? You guys voting water? Who's voting for soda? How, how hard would it be to give up soda and never drink it again? Hey you guys, imagine giving up something that you really like, that you really like doing with your friends, just to prove a political message, and you sign a document with your town saying that you will never drink soda again, you will never eat chocolate bars again.